Hello again. You are watching On the Town, sponsored by The Vegas Voice. I am the publisher and editor of The Vegas Voice, Dan Roberts. And this show deals with local entertainment in Las Vegas, all the good people in town, and what they do to make this city a great place. I'm Dan Roberts from The Vegas Voice magazine, and, and I'm joined by Senator Becky Harris and, of course, the political editor and my lady love, uh, Rhonda Goodman. Uh, I guess we should start with the senator and just ask, what just happened upstairs? We had a fabulous bill signing of Senate Bill 229 with the governor and got some time to speak with the governor about the importance of the bill and have some time to just understand how important guardianship issues are, not only to him, but to everybody in the state of Nevada. Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Roberts. I am the publisher and the editor of the Vegas Voice magazine, and we are introducing a new segment to the magazine called The Five-Minute Interview. Hi, everybody. I am here visiting Dan Roberts. He is the publisher and editor of The Vegas Voice. I see this all the time online, and I never thought I'd be visiting with the person behind it. It's been around since March 2003, and it took a big transition this past March, and I wanted to just find out and talk to Dan and learn all about it, and it is based right here in Henderson. Hey, Dan. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I am so excited to be here with you. Um, you know, just the fact that you've been able to maintain this for so long, I know how challenging it is. Yeah. It's, it's really a one-man show a lot of times. It's your relationships. It's the stories that you beat the bushes for, and you've been doing that for a long time. So tell me, how did you start and why? You know, this really started as a way of getting out of the house. And when I came here with my family in 1999, I was retired. You can tell from the accent, I'm from back east. From yes, Europe. yes. I was retired. I was going to spend the rest of my life going on vacation and hanging out. And after about six months, the wife said, you got to get out of the house. you gotta, you got to do something. you got to get out. And what we did is that I ended up starting a not-for-profit foundation to help people who are on Medicare because we've always dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I had a small distribution company. And one thing led to another, and before you know it, we started a, uh, a senior publication. Wow. Just like that. Uh, just like that. And as people who read the magazine can tell you, that obviously I don't have any experience in what I'm doing. So, oh. and, and, and that's always been the fun part about mm -hmm. it. It just seemed like a, just a fun thing to do. And we've been doing it now for, for 15 years. So it sounds like it was kind of an organic thing for you. It just You just kind of let it happen and evolve how it needed to grow and whatever. And you know, it, it evolved, it, it grew. When I came out here, I, I worked with seniors, helping them with their Medicare problems. Mm -hmm. That's what I used to do back in New York. Okay. An attorney. And then we formed a little distribution company uh, that would help with all the newspapers doing deliveries around town. And back then it was. There were so many yeah. before the recession. And I got very friendly with the senior paper here in Las Vegas and Henderson. I knew all the people. And the next thing you know, they were purchased out. And then they were all out of a job. And we were commiserating and saying, well, goodbye, nice meeting wow. you. And the editor said, you know, if only we had someone who could help with the advertising sales, maybe we could start a paper. And the advertising gal said, well, I can do the sales if only we had someone who knew how to do the distribution. I said, wait a minute, I've been distributing. And they said, well, what we need is someone to put in some money. And we all looked at each other. Yeah, that's the way. <laughs> and, and I was the last guy uh, standing. Yeah. And before long, we had, a, we had a paper. We started out as Senior Life, Las Vegas Senior Life, back in March Oh, so let me have this one here, for me. This was, this was the first sure, edition. This was our first edition that I don't show anybody anymore because I'm embarrassed over it. But when we did this, uh, you can you can see my father-in-law is on the front page. Oh, he is that? Out. Yeah, that was my that was my father-in-law. Wow! And the editor at the time said, "This is how you this is how you put yeah, this is how you put a paper together." And I said, "Well, you know, I really want to do things differently. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm from New York. I wanted it more of a younger feel, more like a, a like the New York Daily News, and I want to add to this and that, and I had a whole bunch of ideas." And the gentleman said, no, you don't know what you're talking about. This is how it's done. And because I'm from New York, I said, that's great, but I signed the check. <laughs> so let me tell you how I want to turn it out. Yeah. He left after two months, and then it became yeah. mine. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I know from experience it's a lot of work and it, it has to be a passion. And what aspect of it is your passion? Was it, is it delivering to seniors, uh, information to seniors? Or is it just delivering information all the way around? I mean, there's always a, a little piece of it that you are truly passionate about. You know, about. It, it was something in which we wanted to get across to people who are over 50. You're not dead yet. You still have majority of I your life, really fit to go forward. Yeah. And why don't we enjoy it to the fullest? And, and what we really wanted to do is we made you know, the tagline, the voice for your health, well, and good times. Yes, that's great. And that's what we concentrated on. We wanted to do entertainment for seniors, we were professional entertainment. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have travel options for seniors. We wanted, again, seniors being 50 and over. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to do it in such a fashion so that people will look forward to reading the publication and say, okay, what's out there this month? And it became a lot of fun. And I was fortunate enough, after my wife passed away, I met somebody who, thank God, you know, took me in and, you know, despite my faults, who was a very actively trying to help people, her age, our age. Oh, okay. And next thing you know, we got involved with guardianship, and, and now we have a real issue, and it's, it's we keep very busy. But yeah. it's great. Again, it is passion. It is something that we enjoy doing. Yeah, and I mean, it's very evident that, that you enjoy doing it. I know when I spoke with you on the phone, you know, when I call people to beg them to be on my no. show, <laughs> I always try to find <clears throat> something in that conversation that lets me know I made the right choice. And from the get-go in our conversation, you were just so affable and, and so tuned in. And it's, it, it was almost like, you know, you shared my, uh, my understanding of the need that we have here in Henderson. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and again, I mean, we're in every home in Sun City, Anthem. We're in every home in Sun City, uh, Henderson. I'm sorry, Donald mm -hmm. Ranch, Anthem Country Club, Seven Hills. I mean, this is our this is our town. Yeah. This is our neighborhood. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, we care very deeply. So you can understand why I started this show straight out of Henderson because I really love Henderson. I am president of the Henderson Rotary Club. Okay. Um, I uh, member of the chamber, a member of you know uh, Water Street District. I mean, and and like I said, I'm from Aurora, Colorado, and so I saw the similarities between Henderson and Aurora, and I'm sure that's what really drew uh, drew me in. Right. I was living in Summerlin. Okay. And uh, my son really liked Henderson because mm -hmm. I made him move to Summerlin with me oh, when okay. I moved here. And so I agreed to just check it out. And then I, when I came down here, I just really loved it. And it's really been for me, because uh, I'm also a widow, uh, just a, um, a great place to be. I feel truly embraced. But I also feel like I can reach everything in town. I go down to Water Street and I talk, you know, hey, what's going on here and there? All those small businesses and now all the things that are happening. I wanted to ask you about the development going on in Henderson because I'm I, you sound so active and you've probably seen a lot of firsthand. First of all, have you been in any on any committees or anything that led to any of the development here? No, I wish I did. I mean, I, I was involved and still am with the Henderson Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. We're still an active member on it. What I, what I can't get over about Henderson is that when I moved here in 1999, there was nothing here. There was, I was told there's a Green Valley. There was no Green Valley station. Yeah, you know, and that's where we ended up moving. And I remember uh, the real estate agent taking me down east to Sun City Anthem, Anthem Country Club, and it was all there. Yeah, and, wow. And again, coming a boy from the Bronx, I wasn't allowed to step on grass until I was 13 years old. Yeah. That's where I grew up. <laughs> you know? and, 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 and the real estate agent said, oh, listen, it's empty now, but within a year, two years, it's going to be fully developed. And I said, you're out of your mind. Yeah. I said, it's going to take years, for God's sake. And it, it developed, it grew, and it, it's fascinating to see how the, the city has grown, mm -hmm. Green Valley area. Uh, I remember when, when we first moved here, the, the, the people there said, oh, you're so lucky, 215 just opened up to pay Wow. And, and, and wow, you know, I, I, how can you not live on a parkway? I mean, yes. You know, I, that's how we grew up in the, Oh in the my city goodness. I mean, you're playing on a cement baseball field in New York. That's how we grew I up, lived, yeah. I lived in New York for a short time. I was okay. going to be a great writer. I lived on 33rd and Lexington. Oh, okay. Right by across from Pratt Institute. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I, he was going to be the artist. I was going to be the writer. Okay. And, you know, your dreams immediately. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Life gets in the Gotta way. Gotta eat yeah, and no, everything. Life gets in the way. Yeah. But I loved New York. And so, in you saying what you said, I'm thinking, a New Yorker who's been active coming here to this slower town. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's just amazing how, how Henderson has grown. Yeah. It really has. It's, 
just fantastic. What is the thing that most surprises you in terms of growth or something that they're going to be doing or did in Henderson? You know what? The, the thing that really surprised me, again, I, I'm used to New York with the fast pace. Right, yeah. It was slower here. And it's still slower than New York, but I found that 99% of the people, they're good people. They're friendly. They're, they're, they're willing to work with you. I, 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 I was very impressed with the people, and I yeah. was impressed with the fact that there's nobody from here. You know, everyone is from some someplace else. So it's not like you're an outsider looking in. They they welcome you. Well, you know, our cameraman was born here. He was, huh? Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> and, 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 and that's pretty cool. I gotta tell you, my my Rana, uh, she moved here when she was 12 from England. Wow. So she went to the high school here, and and she can tell you. You know, stuff about, oh no, this was empty and that was empty. Oh, and that must empty. be, I'm gonna have to have a comment. Oh, you have to. I mean, I mean yeah. and, and she says, oh, Henderson, nobody even thought about Henderson. Yeah. And I said, well, you must have bought all the land, so you must be a multi millionaire. Oh, so now. And if I would have known, you know, who, who would have known? Well, you know, I, I just love seeing the growth, and I, I really wanted to start my show because I saw that maybe what was going on wasn't really actually what happened is the um, I think his name is Mark from the uh, redevelopment uh, agency okay. in the yep. city building and he came and spoke to my rotary club and we all sat there with our mouths dropped open what they're building that where you yeah, mean yeah. down there yeah. oh, there, there's a thing going up over. and so I thought oh my goodness we're really missing out nobody you know the big news is not going to come out and say oh we're going to show this new development over here unless it's something really avant-garde mm -hmm. or something like that so I thought, wow, I think people might be interested in seeing what's going on day to day around Henderson. Now, it's not big news, but it's news to us. Yeah. And that's why I started my show, and it sounds like you saw that need, and you knew you could fill it with your magazine and everything. I mean, you've got, so let, let me go over this. So you've got the Vegas, I'm going to set this down. You've got the, the Vegas, Vegas voice. This is the way it looks now. Yeah, we, we changed over from that newspaper look to a magazine in March of this year. So we've been doing it for about six, seven months. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, isn't it? It, it, it? it? It's a lot of fun. I know our readers are very happy, easier to read, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people say, well, no, I don't, I don't get the newspaper printed on my fingers and everything, but I said, that's part of the fun, you know? But yeah. They like the magazine, you can stick it right no, in the No, this is and great, and so, you know, I, I'm on the board of the philanthropist, I know Victoria very well. Oh, very really? Well. Okay, we, we just yeah. met up with her. She's going to be working with us on, on this, and as well as our nonprofit to help us seniors for guardian mm -hmm. abuse. So, yeah. We're, we're, we're really kicking, you know, and, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's a reason to wake up every morning. And let's, and let's go. That's what I love about what I do. Right. And meeting up with you and you being based on the newspaper or the magazine being based in Henderson was so refreshing to me because I was happy to know that there was a resource for people in Henderson, um, you know, that they could read and catch up and, and that you're featuring small businesses and mm -hmm. all of that. And that's so important to me as a business coach. It's like I'm always looking for uh, where can I send people to that's a good value uh, for promoting their business or that really targets their niche market, you yeah. know, and that's it, important. And, and one of the things that we really concentrated on, and it, it does mean a lot to us, is that we wanted to provide, besides information, we now provide entertainment. and. I know a lot of people in Henderson saying, I'm not going to the strip. Yeah. Just like when you lived in New York, I'm not going to Times Square. Exactly. I'm not yes. going to the parking. Yes. So what we started to do, and we're going to go big time in next year, is that we're going to bring the shows to Sun City Anthem, to Solera at Anthem, to McDonald's Ranch. And, and, and they're great shows. I mean, yeah. and, and it's it's a lot of fun. It, yeah. It's bringing people who normally will not get out, let's say, and they, they don't want to go downtown. They don't want to go to the strip. They can. Go right to that community center, yeah. right to that place, and see a great show. And we're, we're very, you can see, we're very excited about it. We have a lot of plans going on. I think that's a great idea because I often wonder, you know, the, the Sunset Casinos, um, the Fiestas, and all those who are so well on Sconced here in Henderson, uh, they have a lot of uh, features there that, you know, especially as old schoolers know the names and everything, but, you know, I don't know if, if you're not a member, does it really get out? Now, I see you have advertisement in here for Sunset, and I know uh, I see it in something else that I look at, but yeah. um, but to be able to uh, you know court those those performers over here into Henderson, where you have a ready and willing market and audience. You, might, you know something. You no, know, I agree with you, but there's something else. I tell my sons, hey, guess what? We're going to have Rich Little on our show, 
and they look at me like, yeah. Rich Little. Who is he? Wait, wait. And then one of the people that really, it, and, and it's a sticker shock, is that when we first started, I can't tell you how thrilled we got. One of our columnists is Marty Allen. Mm -hmm. The Marty Allen. Allen and Rossi. I mean, he, the guy is fantastic. He's been like an uncle to me. I love the guy to death. And I'm explaining to different people who Marty Allen is, and they're all 30. And, and I said, Marty, I got Marty Allen. And they stare they at you. Really and I said, don't you understand Allen and Rossi? No, yeah. they stare at you. And I said, well, wait a minute. They were on the Ed Sullivan show like 30 <laughs> times. And, wait a minute. <laughs> and who? And I said, wait, wait, no, Ed Sullivan, yeah. wait a minute. And then they hit me with, well, Marty Allen and his partner, Rossi, they have a distinction when the Beatles came to the United States and the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan show, they were on the same show. And I'm saying, don't you understand? They were on the same show with the Beatles. Yeah. And they say, yeah. Who? And now you got to, now you got to hurt them, right? Oh, like, oh wait. The? You know what? They had to hold them back. <laughs> We don't want to play with you anymore. Yeah, and that's why it's so important what you're doing. I mean, if you're bringing the 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 generational, the Henderson, the the, the you know targeting in on a certain uh, generation of people and their likes and the baby boomers and all those people like you and I, yeah. 63, 64. I mean, we know, we feel you. We know what you're looking for, and it sounds like you're going to bring it to us. Well, good. Whether you like it or not, whether you like yeah. it or not, I, we, we're going to bring it to you. We we want you to enjoy your life. I mean, that's our goal. If you can. Look at the magazine and, and you see the show and you smile. It's great. Look, we, we're not going to promote the nightclubs, yeah. okay? If you're going clubbing, that's great. Yeah. Man. Best of luck. We don't do that. But you know what? We don't start the show at 10, 11 o'clock at night yeah. because I'm asleep. By I'm then. asleep. Thank so, you. No, so we start by 6.30, 7 o'clock. Yeah. It's in your right here in your neighborhood. So it's not like, oh, I got to drive and this and that. Well, and man. you're home by 8.39. And it's what we want. I, I want to go out, yeah. have a drink, a nice dinner, listen to some jazz, some good music, some, you know, I, I'm down with that, but I can't go in a screaming club. I no. can't go in, in a crowded, uh, you know, yeah. and all of that. And I got to tell you, since you mentioned uh, Rich Little, so I went to, um, my Rotary had an event, and we had it at the uh, Queen, Queens Ridge at Emerald. Okay, okay. I'm someone, yeah. And our, our uh, entertainment was Rich Little. Now, unbeknownst to many people there, who didn't realize that he could be a little blue. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it was so fun. He hasn't missed a step. He was spot on. He looks great. He was so funny. Just a shout out to you, Rich, because I mean, you really brought it down at our yeah. our thing at Twain's Ridge. But um, I think that that's a market. Everybody's looking for that, you know? A chance to not be like the strip. I personally, unless I have to go down, and I ain't got nothing against the strip, God knows, but. Sometimes it's a little challenging, and now that you can't really park and different park things anymore. like that, you know. And, you know, and, and what, one of the things that we thought were also great is that you're going to go down to the, your, your center, community center there. Oh, I know my neighbor. Oh, that's. And all of a sudden, you you start making friends because again, yeah. most of the scene, everybody, nobody's from here. Yeah. So, oh, I'm from Chicago. I'm from California. I'm from New York. And oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I see you again. You start mm -hmm. talking and you start making friends. Yeah. And. and how does it get any better than that? Yeah, so that's a great, you know, you should use that in your advertising. Come make friends. I gotta write that down. Come Absolutely. make friends, <laughs> yeah, you know, at this or that. Yeah. I mean, I'm down. I'll yeah. definitely be there for you if you need anything because I really look for, like I said, again, as a widow, so I'm looking for something that I feel safe, mm -hmm. that addresses, you know, what I love to do and, um, you know, fits my idea of good entertainment. And, and definitely that happens before 10 because Mama, when I go home, Mama put the bunny slippers on. I'm done. You're done. I'm not going back. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. I, believe me, I yeah, know yeah, that feeling. Yeah, 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 I know. You know, and, and one of the things that, that we try and put in our magazine, and we're really trying to live by this mm -hmm. motto, is that the idea is to make, fun, make friends, mm -hmm. have fun, and do good. And if you can put all three of those together, it doesn't get any better yeah. than that. I think, I think that, that you've accomplished that um, and that you will even go further with that. Uh, that's a niche market, and I'm so glad to know that you're going to be feeling that or are already feeling feeling that. Uh, you know so many people. I can't imagine that that particular effort of you bringing that kind of entertainment to Henderson is is going it, to it's going to happen because of just your your network, yeah. you know, of your sphere of influence. Well, you know, I, I and I wish I can take all the credit, and I really can't take any of it. To be no, 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 I really can't. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm very lucky. I'm. I'm with somebody now who is 
with it, anything that has gone wrong in my life, I, I'm very fortunate to have Aww. someone who loves me and I love them, you know, and and I've been with Rhonda now and she's been a, a, a conscious of, of, the, of the magazine, right. looking mm -hmm. at it. We have a uh, entertainment editor who just loves what he's doing and Look, I don't care about anything else. Let's let's bring a show on. And and Evan's been with us now for three years. He's mm -hmm. been great. My partner's been very good for me. You know, and yeah. I, you get very lucky. Yeah. You know, with all the down things and things oh my that happen, yes. you get lucky. And and thank God I've, I've been lucky. Yeah. Man. Well, you know, you're very humble uh, about. No, far from humble. No, well, no, no. no. I, I'm look, not humble. I, that's what I say when people say I'm humble. Yeah. I say the same thing you're saying. Yeah. But you know what? I mean, because I've looked behind the scenes, I know that this is just really the tip of your iceberg. Mm. Uh, you do so much in the community, and I think what I see and what I've heard from you is that you really are a supporter of small businesses and, and new entertainers, people that really need that leg up. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I said to you. I'll be very honest. You know, I, I'm excited about, because, uh, you know, I used to have a magazine and a newspaper and whatever, and so I was thrilled just to meet somebody in the biz. But um, also, I was just uh, really, like, wanting to meet you because I could see what you were doing for the community. You know, yeah. my show is all about community and featuring things in the community and people doing good. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's probably a good thing that people don't realize how hard we work and how little you get back. So you have to have the passion. Because that's your without, fulfillment. Without a doubt. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing that. You know, with, without a doubt. I mean, just give you one, I'll give you two examples. One is that we've had entertainers who, oh, I, I never heard of him, I never heard yeah. of her. And I tell them, and I tell people, Come to the show. If you don't think he or her is worthwhile, I'll give you back your money. But you got to be honest with yeah. me. And you hear these people sing, and you say, "Oh my God, why aren't they on? You know, why aren't they on TV?" And yeah. the idea of bringing them to people is it, isn't that fulfilling? It is. Oh, it's, yeah. it. it's, yeah. it's a great kick. And then you got the small businesses, and you got the health-related stuff. And if you can help somebody. Oh my God, I didn't know that. And mm -hmm. oh, now you put me in touch with so-and-so. And oh, I didn't realize that. And there's things that are out there. And they come back and they say, oh, thank you so much. And they mean it. They do. Yeah, they do. They do. You can't put a price tag on No, that, you can't. you feel great. Pat. You feel fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I'm not doing this because, you know, it's paying my bills. I'm doing this because yeah. <laughs> I love doing it. Right. And I love meeting people and I love helping people. And, and my show, just like your magazines and everything, it gets out there and tries to showcase, uh, wait, let me just throw this in. Yeah. So I met with uh, Lou Laporta, do you know him? Over at the Henderson Historical Society. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. I mean, here's this guy tucked away on the water street with this vast knowledge, and not just him, but the whole organization has all these people who grew up, went to basic, back in the day when basic manufacturing yeah. was still around. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, just the things that you can expose that to people who don't know that there's a resource right down on Water Street, yeah. or it, at all of our libraries, you can look at all the historical documents and things like that. So that's what my show has been able to mm -hmm. reveal. And hopefully it's a great resource for uh, people coming to Henderson, or, or people who have been here forever to remind them of, of what they were a part of. Yep. And so I see us very, we are like maybe kindred <laughs> on that <laughs> mess, right? Okay. Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, without, and, and one of the things I'm going to suggest to you, even oh, you know, on the air right now, is you know, my Ronald Goodman grew up here. Mm -hmm. and, and she can tell you, oh, let me tell you what it was like not to have dirt streets. And I'm saying, what are you, what are I know. you talking about? I know, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to talk to her. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Said something up I would love to have her come out on a shoot and her be the person taking me around places that I'm not familiar with. Oh, she, yeah. I mean, she grew up with it. Okay, right. Okay. okay. He, he, already, he already offered you up. There you go. Um, but, you know, um, before we close out, uh, share with me where you hope to see uh, all of this go. Like, what, what do you see in the future for your, your magazine? Uh, you, you said you have uh, you uh, kind of dipped into podcasting and right. and uh, online shows and things like that. So, uh, are you going to be growing that aspect? I, I I truly hope so. I mean, what we'd like to do for 2018 is we're growing our entertainment shows. We did 12, 15 last year. We're going to do about 30 this year. Wow! And and we're happy with it. We want to we want to increase the the guardianship protection so nobody will ever get caught up in that scandal again and we can spend hours and hours talking about it. Uh, we, we have like a weekly radio show, our, our man Rich Natoli does it, oh, and, yeah. uh -huh. and, and, and we want to increase that, we want to do podcasts, we want to we get out and 
the idea, the great idea that we have is that if you're over 50, you want to read our publication. Yeah. You want to be a part of it. And, and you, uh, you have an idea, oh, why can't we do this? Why can't we increase this? Our attitude very strongly is, you know, you're 50 and over. As I said, you're not dead yet. Let's just enjoy ourselves. And what do we do to make things just a little bit better for your neighbors? Just a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You know, and, and meanwhile, if you can have fun doing it yeah. and make friends, what a great way to look. Yeah. I think we're both lucky in that regard because we get to meet people all the time and, and that's just so much fun. Uh, how does somebody get, uh, well, an article in your magazine, um, you know, a connection in some way to your magazine, whether it's advertising or whatever? All they have to do is, is give me a call. My phone number is 702-251-4441. What? I guess the way of the world now is they don't call, they email. Yeah. So by all means, our email address is, is on the mask. And what's your website? It is uh, thevegasvoice.net. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my email is dan at thevegasvoice.net. Give me a call. Okay, so me. don't talk about I don't know how to reach him. He can give you everything, everything except his can. address. <laughs> we'll keep that on the down low. But, you know, I mean, this is a great person. I'm telling you, I've met a lot of people, and he's just so welcoming and open and willing to help. I call him out of nowhere. He ain't heard of me, but he was so welcoming. And I just really appreciate sitting here with you. Like I said, we're so kindred. Uh, so aligned on a lot of the things that we've done yeah. in our 60 some odd years. Um, and I, but we look 20 years But ago. we look good. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm still looking forward to our relationship and moving forward with you in any capacity that I can help. Uh, you and your magazine, and you know, I don't have no problem asking you for anything. So. And, wait, and how much fun will we have? Uh, ton. <laughs> I mean, look how much fun we're having right now, people. Do we look like fun people? Come on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm here for you. You're here for me. Is there any last things you want to say to the people out no, there? I, I, I just want to thank everybody for supporting the magazine, for reading the magazine. Uh, there's nothing more I love than that someone stops me and says, oh, I like this article, or even better, I didn't like this person. I didn't like that. Do this, do that. Yeah. I, I, we, we just love suggestions. Yeah. Well, you need all that. You need the input so you can improve or whatever you do, or you know. So I, I, um, I'm just really thrilled. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, I look forward to doing more with you. I certainly want to follow you. If you need me to, to, to do something, just ask. I mean, I'm just so in love with you right now and everything that you've accomplished and. Um, you can see on our B-roll a lot of the things that he's done, even get got to meet, what's the dog's name? Dog's name is Daisy. You got to meet Daisy? That's a beautiful dog. It reminds me of the, the uh, dog in the movie. It's, please don't eat the daisies. Didn't they have a big old white dog I have like no that? idea, but if anybody wants to take the dog. No! <laughs> oh, no. He'll, somebody in this household will, mm, you know what? He's got a poo no. back there. I don't see no, no, yeah. no, no, you I mean, New Yorker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very lucky. Yeah. Really very lucky with everything, how, how everything turns out. I guess everything does turn out for the best. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything that God has a plan for us. Uh, whether Absolutely. you like it or not. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. But anyway, I want to thank you, Dad, for being my guest. My pleasure. I want to thank, thank everybody out there for watching this show. I think it's great information. Please check out uh, Dan's website, his magazine. Can you pick this up, like, in stores and stuff? You can get them at all the libraries, at all the community centers. But again, our claim to fame is that we mail it. Yeah. So, and if you're not getting it, whatever it is, give me a call. Did you hear that? He mails it. We mail over 28,000 copies. So how do they subscribe? They call me and say, uh, put you on the, on list. the mailing list. Yeah, okay. Again, and if you live in the age qualified communities, the sun you're going to get there, this. You better be getting it. Yeah, we're paying for it. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. So, thank you so much for watching Straight Out of Henderson. Thanks to my guest, Dan Roberts. And I'll see you on the next Straight Out of Henderson.